morning so we're back over here uh, looking at this system this is the one we just replaced this number one compressor um, so we've done a little bit of stuff since we've done that we've got this cabinet filled out this is our EMS cabinet essentially so we've got our 168 board we've got all of our transducers landed and run so we ran some conduit just some seal tight uh, right now everything's just kind of loose just kind of hanging it'll all get cleaned up but um, we've got our transformer transformers going into our board but I don't have power on the transformer yet um, I just have the wires right here and then we'll find a spot somewhere over here to power it and then the other thing that we've done like I said we ran these conduit the seal tight over to each one of these cans and you can see this one's running in over here and we've just got these transducer wires kind of pulled out um, we're waiting on fittings to put them on the compressor the fittings on the compressor those should be in today and then we're gonna end up picking them up but so right now we just have these transducer wires loose once we get those fittings on then we'll put the transducers on land the wires that's pretty much all we'll have to do over here other than um, charge and start this compressor up and then the biggest thing is just going to be the programming for both of these okay so we got these transducers hooked up you can see i got oil low pressure high pressure and it's the same on uh, both compressors i think it's hard to see but you can see the high pressure and then we got the oil low pressure as well we got these run into this can coming through coming out uh, we may run into a little bit of interference running them into this can like this um, typically you're not supposed to run EMS wire with uh, high voltage and this is 460 so we might have issues if we do I've already got a backup plan I'm gonna try this for now for now and if it works it works if it doesn't I'll have to rerun some stuff but got my zip ties in remember with these zip ties you don't want to make them tight on these EMS wires. You want them tight enough to hold them, but not too tight. If you make them too tight, you're going to pinch these wires. You're going to have communication issues. So we got this in place. Next, I'm going to come over and I'm going to power up this board. I'll be over in here powering up that board. All right, so how I'm going to wire this is I'm going to take, these are my wires going to my transformer. I'm going to take these basically along this bottom here and uh, wire these on. Uh, this is my fan breaker right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab power from my fan breaker. Uh, my reasoning behind that is my fan's running all the time. So as long as my fan's not tripped, that board will be powered. But if my fan does trip, I don't want my compressor to run. So I want that to put that board to turn off. So turn that fan off and I'm going to see where we have power at. Yes, sir. You got it all? Oh, buddy. Hey, we're Okay, so I'm going. So this is 208 from here to here. I'm going to go ahead and pull it from this side. Like I said, that way, if my fan ever trips, it kills that board, which in turn will kill my compressor.
so I got these wires landed right here, right? L1, L2, that'll give me my 208. Kick this on. It's gonna have a little delay to it, but. Boom, right there through my phase monitor. Now, if I come over to this side. I come over to this yep I'm all lit up now so that's good that means I'm getting power to my board so I've got my power coming in going through my transformer over into my board none of these ROs are in use this uh, this board's basically just gonna be used for monitoring on our AIs we got three transducers on one compressor three transducers on the other all going right here to our five volts um, okay so I got this board programmed right here it's super easy emerson makes it nice to where they have everything kind of labeled on these boards um i know that s3 is my ai addressing down here right um so you can see i have dip switches one through eight and we have on and off so one through five is my addressing number six is my baud rate and then uh or sorry six seven eight are my baud rate for the ais right it works a little bit different with our ROAR or ROAO boards, uh, which is this one right here. But since we're not using any ROs, we're not using any AOs, all I'm worried about is my AI. So how this works is pretty simple. We have dip switches one through five, right? And I'll kind of show. I'll kind of show this. So we have one, two, three four five that's our addressing right now the way that you read this is one is one and then it doubles so one is one two is two three is four four is eight five is sixteen right and then you just use this combination so if I want board 12, I'm gonna do dip switches four and dip switches three up, right? If I want board 20, then I would do dip switches five and dip switches four up. If I want board three, then it's dip switches one and two, right? So it's pretty simple. Again, it's just one is one and then it doubles. So that's how you can get, there's also a, uh, like a document that I have saved on my phone that, I, that I've used for a long time. But if you understand how, it's, how it works like that with those dip switches, then you don't need that little document. You can just look. So this, I know that this is one, two, so this is AI number four is how I have it programmed, right? So then I need to come over to my controller. Okay, I'm looking at my BX controller, my building controller. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Alt, N, which is my uh, networking, right? My network summary. So this shows me all my boards. So when I go through, I can see I've only got one, two, three AI boards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, RO, one DO, two AO, right? So that's why I address that AI board uh, number four is because I've already got three. So what I need to do is I need to come into seven, which one is it? Uh, network setup, I believe. Connected IO boards and controllers. I gotta log in first. Connected IO boards and controllers. So now here is where I tell, right? So you can see where it says 16 AI, three, four AO, two, eight DO, right? So we're telling the controller how many boards it's looking for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the 16 AI from three. Now that I have a fourth board, I'm gonna change that to a four, right? And now what's gonna happen is my network is gonna go red. I'm gonna have a board that pops up and it should come online. Do we have that thing wired in yet? I don't think we have it wired in yet. You know what? We don't have it wired in yet. So I need to go upstairs, terminate those wires, 
um, in order to get this to read online. So let me go get that roof hatch open. Let me go get on the roof and we'll get that wire. Right, so this is what we got going on upstairs. This is the condenser right here. So you can see we got six fans. Basically this runs one compressor. This is another compressor. And inside of here, I've got a board. So I don't believe, yeah, we got this wire right here that was never terminated. So what I need to do is take this wire, terminate it up here, and then, again, CPC makes stuff super simple. We got these termination jumpers right here. I'm gonna have to come in and take the termination. Right now I have these terminated. There's these jumpers right here. I have those terminated. I'm gonna have to take the termination off of those and terminate the board that we have downstairs because that board downstairs will be our end of line board. But first we gotta get this connected and then I'll go back downstairs. All right, so we got these wires terminated up here. Those are all in. And then I did this termination jumpers. I made them all not terminated. All the ones downstairs will be terminated now. And uh, what I was explaining to my guys, these fans, once we unplug this comm wire, these fans started running. The way that I have these wired up is if this board loses power or loses communications, the fans all kick on. So that way the ACs can still run um, in the event this board loses power because this board just runs our condenser, right? We got left one, left two, left three, right one, two, three, right? And that's coinciding to each one of these fans. So, um, like I said, in the event this board loses communication, these things are wired up to where it'll run. All right, and then the last thing I got to do with this board is take these termination jumpers. Try to get this thing out of the way. All you do is you take them from this side to this side. Okay, so again, number three is up. So that's board number four. And then we just gotta go check our controller and make sure that we're online. Okay, so I can tell right away that this board is reading. Oh, it was green, now it just went red. Let's see. 8RO1 device absent. That's not our board. I don't know which board that is, but if I come over here to Alt N, we can see that my 16 AI board is now online. So this board right here, this RO board number one, it's showing me that it's address number one. So RO board number one, wherever that is, it might be in this cabinet. Um, let's see. RTU. AHU. I'd have to look at these boards to see which one's number one. Actually, it's this one right here. Right? We can see that number one on that dip switch is on. So this is board number one. So for whatever reason, it's saying that this board is currently offline, which this board is on. Oh, okay. So now it's back online. So now we got everything back online. All right. So what we've done here is um, I've got these control wires that were originally to the compressor. So this was for, uh, this was coming off your fuse right here and going to your contactor up here. You can see I cut that wire up there. Um, and this was going to your high pressure, low pressure and oil fell, right? So what I did is I took these, I still have them here in case my plan doesn't work, but I ran two more wires through this conduit here coming out to my RO board. So I have one wire going to common on my first point and then I'm jumping from normally open to common, normally open to common, and then normally open is going back. So one wire is coming from my fuse, landing on this RO and then we're jumping in series to this next wire, which is then going back to my contactor. So with all three of these relays calling, my contactor closes with any of them tripped you'll have to listen you should be able to hear that contactor on and off so that's off on off on off on so with any of those tripped my contactor will open now how it's going to be is i'm going to have one ro for high pressure one ro for low pressure one ro for oil i'm going to set up analog center controls in the controller with cut in and cut out parameters. And then as they hit those cut in and cut out parameters, it'll open and close um, these relays, which will energize and de-energize our contactor. 
that solenoid down there, that one that's under there, has its own RO point that's going off the BX controller uh, based off store temperature, store humidity, All right? So these are basic, this, this is just a digital form um, of my safeties, right? Is how this is set up. They're set up in series and I have them on normally open just in case something happens and my condenser goes down and this loses calm. Um, that way I don't kill any compressors. But that's how we have it set up here. Next, I just have to do the programming. Okay, so what I've done is I've made um, analog sensor controls. So each one of those RO points now has its own analog sensor control, right? So I have AHU compressor one high, low, and oil. And you can see these uh, commands coincide with the points that I had. So basically what I did, if we go into high, Right, so all I did was I set up uh, analog sensor controls, named it, put my input in. That's my transducer for my high pressure right there. Um, my set points, I'm gonna have to play with these a little bit. I'm just trying to get something that to make it run and then I'm gonna have to dial everything in. My outputs, that's that RO point. Um, and then yeah, so you can see right here on my low pressure and my oil, those are currently showing off. So if we come over to the board, Right, that one that's energized is my high pressure. So I've got my low pressure, high pressure, and oil just for this one compressor, right? And like I said, I have that control wire coming in. We're running in series with those ROs that are tied to those transducers with those cut in and cut out set points. And then this other one runs back to my contactor. So it's basically just like a normal set of, um, what's it called? Pressure controls, but now we're doing it off the controller with transducers. So I've set it, I checked it by manualing um, these points on and off, and then I'm gonna confirm it by coming over. So I'm gonna come to my main AHU, and this, basically this point controls my solenoid, this one right here that I'm highlighting. So this one opens and closes my solenoid. Now I still have to um, charge the system. I've got one bottle of gas in it right now, but if I come in, I go to override, yes, and I manual this solenoid on, it's gonna energize. I can hear that my solenoid just energized and it should start this compressor up once those pressures get to where they're supposed to be. Let's see. So I can see, boom, right there. All three of my analog sensor controls made their, their on conditions, boom. It pumped it down because there's not enough gas and it turned that compressor off. Look at that. So that solenoid's still energized, so this should build pressure. Yep. So we're building pressure there and this compressor should, should energize any second. And there we go, we got our compressor on. So um, that is how we're able to control this compressor and also we can now dial in the ultrasight and if we have any questions on whether or not this compressor is running we'll be able to look and we'll be able to tell based off these pressures if that compressor is running or not so i think that's pretty much the conclusion for this video um i still have a decent amount of work to do but it's nothing that like i just got to clean up wires and then i basically got a program this second compressor, like how I programmed this first compressor. Um, so that's pretty much it. And that's, I mean, like I said, it's basically just pressure controls, but now they're on the controller instead of having manual controls on the compressor. So um, that's pretty much all I got for this one. I really appreciate everybody's support. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, share this with somebody if you think they might like it or they might need it. And uh, yeah, thank you. Later.